Hello, folks. It's John Doyle from Optics EQ, another video race of the day. And we got a good one, I think, at Gulfstream on January 5th. It's Wednesday. It's race five. It's a turf route, optional claimer. And I think this is a, an interesting race, and especially, I think, great race just to show the power, I think, of optics plot. So we have a big field, 16 horses, uh, and uh, 13 through 16 are AEs. So there's going to be some horses that come out of this race. And so we're going to have to just, again, what I suggest, after the scratches, go back and reevaluate the plot. But I'm going to just do some projections here and see what we come up with. First thing, always look at the header. See the plot fit is a yellow, uh, not red. Contention is the sun. So that means it's kind of average. And the speed rating's a little bit below average. I think 25 is about average, so a little bit below average. And you can see that um, quadrant one is a little bit sparse especially if you take out the 16 and the 15. you can you can see especially on surface and distance you'll see the 11 really will pop once the 15 and 16 are out of the race it's assuming they get scratched that's a good bet i think uh the other thing you notice that if you look at the run styles heavily shifted to the right you know they're all kind of pc or c's majority of the field um if the 15 and 13 go out really um Five and ten are the only E, P, and E, E, P, and P's in the in the race. Now the eleven um, kind of is runs out says closer, but you know we'll get into this horse's form. What I've seen with this horse is that he won his maiden breaking race uh, as a closer, but I don't think they figured out what's what, what what what's with this horse because in all his races he's been kind of keen and held up behind horses. So he could be sneaky speed in this race. And if I was advising connections, I'd be going for the lead in this race. Uh, I think that's his best chances of win, and he's a big price. So he's going to look interesting here. Again, it's all going to depend on tactics, but not much pace in this race, especially when you start taking these AEs out, okay? So pay attention. The next thing I would notice is there's a lot of circles, on the, especially on the surface and distance, and there's really not many squares. When you take the, If you take the 14 and 13 out, and again, reevaluate, you know, if um, these, this, something changes. You really only have the two, five, six, and nine as the other squares in the race on surface and distance. So I'm going to kind of evaluate those, the squares in this race, because they do have a much better chance, especially on the turf course at Gulfstream. And especially if, you know, they're going to have to come from behind, you know, so keep that in mind. So let's go in here and I'm going to, I'm going to start off by just kind of looking. I just want to see recent speed figures, recent form cycle. I'm going to lose 45 days. And from a numbers perspective, there's two horses that jump out, the number six, and that's going to be the favorite lonesome fugitive. That's a Chad Brown horse, you can see. And also the number nine, who's uh, got a 94. He's got the best figure. But first of all, I want to just look at number nine here because – that you see there's a little triangle next to the, the, the no, let me bring it up so you can see it a little bit better. There's a little triangle next to that 94. And what that means is, is that um, the charts are missing uh, for that race. So that number to me is not 100%. Uh, I would be concerned by any time you see that triangle. It seems like there's something going on with uh, timing races at Gulfstream, what they're doing by hand or what have you, but that number is probably not trustworthy. And you can see it really doesn't match the other numbers for this horse. Um, I mean, the horse was improving, but that's a big jump up. And uh, so I'd be a little suspect of that number. Um, th you know, that's all. This horse was 41 to 1 in the last race. And the other negative on this was got a red tactics plus. So this horse got the trip last time. So this is a horse you probably can downgrade a little bit. He's 9 to 2. Do you want a horse that was 41 to 1 in the same uh, class level and is now going to be? Nine to two, not me, okay? The six is the favorite. It's probably kind of a legitimate favorite. Um, you could see that this horse has absolutely no red in his form. That's a good thing. Uh, second off a left, I have 110 days. It's in traffic, and the 92 is the best figure, and this horse has run in the 90s before. Here's the problem with this horse. Um, started off his career in New York. Chad Brown horse obviously was improving, and then... Um, when he went over to Saratoga in the second race versus winners, um, he didn't run as well. I mean, the figure came way down. Then he then he was off for 250 days. So something must have went wrong. Um, he ran okay fourth, but again, couldn't break the non-winners one. 
uh, and hasn't since. And even though the figures are good, they're, you know, compared to this field, they're not really good compared to this horse. We would have expected this horse to improve. So to me, especially with all the spacing in this races, in this horse's races, 110 days, 62 days, 250. It's coming back in 34 days. He could maybe crush this field. I just, I, I'd be using him, but I wouldn't say he's an absolute in this race. Uh, but I be using him in the exotics, but, but I want to spice it up. So let's talk about the horses that I think are going to spice it up. And let's start with the number 11. The horse we talked a little bit about was Ginsburg. And here's a note on this last race. It was dirt. He says, not sure what happened here, but the rider didn't seem to have any control. So was, he seemed kind of rank. And, I, you know, I, I've seen this in other races with this horse. This horse is run solid, you know, mid to high 80s. And, uh, you know, he's just a three-year-old. So there's more upside here with this horse. But I just don't know if they really established a run style. Now, we have him as a closer just because his only good race was closing. But I'm not sure that's really what he wants to do. Uh you know, you see he's had trouble in some of these races, wide, no cover. And, you know, even though they were limited to three-year-old races, you know, one was a grade one. So this horse has got some class. Um, and I think what the tactics should be is, again, try to go to the front. This horse seems a little bit one-paced, even though he, he won when he closed in Ellis Park. Uh, put him to the front and see what happens. And so at 20 to one, you could do a lot worse. Because figure-wise, if he can improve on his 85s, 86s, and, you know, the favorite comes back a little bit from his 92, it can put him right in the range. Definitely a horse I want to be using in all slots and take a gamble with him, okay? So I'd be using them all slots in my trifectas. That was the one. The five was the other horse that looked good on the, you know, the plot on the surface, uh, standard plot. He was a quadrant one square, you know. So he's another horse I want to kind of be using in my exotics. Um, because especially he's run fast enough here, 93. Now that was sprinting. Now he was alone in that race and he's going to be forwardly placed in this race. So that might be a positive. He did run against, um, uh, Ginsburg the last time and Ginsburg showed more speed than him. I, I, I don't know if he finished. I, 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 let me go back to Ginsburg here for a moment. See where Ginsburg finished in that race, finished fifth. Okay. So he beat Ginsburg in that race. Um, Ginsburg was a little bit more forwardly placed. So he's in, here's another horse. He's coming off a little bit of a layoff, but another horse I'd be, I'd be using in exotics. Um, you know, just because again, this horse is going to be 15 to one. Okay. And again, he's run fast enough, uh, in the, in the past too. And you can see he's actually always also routing just so you know, around 87 as a two year old. So there's another horse that uh, I would be using. So, you know, five and 11 are very interesting. And also the two is interesting to me. Here's a horse that's, you know, does nothing but really run well. His last race, he ran terrible, but that was a terrible bias last time at, uh, at Aqueduct. They were favoring front runners and this horse just never could get on track. And if you look at this horse's plot, he's the biggest square. So if you need somebody finishing, especially for those underneath slots, uh, this is a horse you want to consider. And again, as another horse, you don't see any red in his past performances. Okay. You don't see any red. So, you know, we identified a couple of just by looking at the plot and kind of digging in a little bit to the, some of the past performances, some horses that look like they might be undervalued in this race. Um, the 11 and the five, and then the six and two look like the, the most legitimate of those horses that will take money. OK, so that's race five at Gulfstream Park on Wednesday. If you want more of this uh, kind of stuff, go to OpticsEQ.com and look us up, ask some questions. And if you want to watch our videos more, uh, just subscribe to our YouTube channel. And hopefully in the future here, we'll do some more uh, interactive stuff with clients, uh, maybe some Zooms or maybe even some uh, live telecast while we watch the races. So stay tuned to that and check out our website. And thanks for listening.